On 14th March 2024, the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change published further amendments to the Hazardous and Other Wastes Management and Transboundary Movement Rules 2016. The rules, initially published in the Gazette of India via GSR 395E, dated 4th April 2016, with the last amendment date under GSR 677E dated 18th September 2023. The latest amendments published under GSR 177E referred to as the hazardous and other wastes management and transboundary movement amendment rules 2024. These amendments take effect from their publication date, that is 14th March 2024. However, provisions outlined in paragraph 6 relating to Rule 29 and para 7 linked to Rule 30 of these rules will come into force starting 1st April 2024. The principal rules encompassing 39 definitions under the Rule 3 have been supplemented with a new clause, Definition 22A, which defines deposition centers as specified in the Solid Waste Management Rules 2016 for collection of domestic hazardous wastes. Additionally, amendments to Rule 6 introduce subrules 1B and 1C, mandating that deposition centers obtain authorization from the respective State Pollution Control Board or Pollution Control Committee and provide domestic hazardous waste to the designated disposal facility operator maintaining records according to Form 3 and filing annual returns in Form 4 to the concerned authorities or regulatory bodies. The amendments to Rule 8 regarding the storage of hazardous waste is laudable. It has extended the storage duration for small generators with capacitors ranging from 5 to 10 tons per year to a period of 180 days and for generators producing less than 5 tons per annum to 365 days. This means the small generators, they need not rush to meet the 90 days criteria to dispose of their hazardous waste with whatever small quantity and pay a very high price for the disposal in the TSDF, the Treatment Storage and Disposal Facility, TSDF. In a significant shift, amendments to Rule 12, which outlines strategies for the import and export of hazardous and other wastes, have introduced subrule 6B, permitting the import of post-industrial or pre-consumer polyethylene wastes with a requirement to export at least 35% of the total annual turnover. Rule 29 now includes subrule 7 to 9, which govern the operation of platforms established for the exchange of extended producer responsibility certificates. These platforms will operate in accordance with the guidelines set by the Central Pollution Control Board, with the board fixing the highest and lowest prices for such certificates. Additionally, registered entities engaging in certificate exchange through these portals must adhere to the prescribed price range. Furthermore, Rule 30 introduces Subrule 5, providing for the relaxation of timelines for filing returns or reports under the rules. The central government reserves the authority to relax such periods by order not exceeding nine months if deemed necessary in the public interest for effective implementation of the rules. Schedule 3 of the rules sees an addition under item number B3 where the entry for polyethylene terephthalate is followed by the inclusion of polysiloxanes limited to the post-industrial and pre-consumer use. Similarly, Schedule 6 undergoes modifications with the omission of the term polysiloxanes under the item number B3. Schedule 9 receives amendments as well with the insertion of subparagraphs 6 to 9 under paragraph 
Six, empowering the central government to establish platforms for exchange or transfer of extended producer responsibility certificates. The operation of these platforms will be regulated as per the guidelines issued by the central government and the central pollution control board with specified price ranges set for certificate exchange. Moreover, the responsibilities of retraders are outlined under the paragraph 8a mandating the submission of monthly information on retrading activities R E T R E A D I N G retrading activities and the filing of quarterly and annual returns on the portal. Lastly, form 2 of these rules incorporates clause 15 under heading A outlining procedures for handling hazardous waste generated sporadically or routinely in manufacturing processes. Occupiers are required to send sporadically generated hazardous waste to authorized disposal facilities promptly, while routine waste generated within the consented manufacturing process must be included in the authorization within one month of the identification, except in cases of production beyond consented capacities. I am sharing a link of the article we have written on this. It is a paid article. So only the subscribers, the paid subscribers, they can have the access to the article. And I request you again, if you have not taken any paid subscription, please do consider to take a paid subscription because we are shortly going to revise our subscription fees. Thank you very much.